Hi, in this fourth part of our web video series, we're going to focus on writing the HTML and JavaScript that is required to perform the functionalities that we wanted on the web. And we're going to use Angular and Bootstrap. For those of you without any HTML or JavaScript background, this may seem a bit verbose, but actually once you get used to it, you can create extremely powerful UIs that will give you a lot more powers that you can ever achieve with a client-server application. So let's start writing this code. First of all, we start with our HTML. Okay, we have here our index.html, only one line of code. And you can see here that we've added a file called demo controller. We've placed it in our script, JavaScript demo controller, and it starts empty. We're going to play with it. Cool. Now, this is powerful because we could write only one line of HTML code and have everything else come from a template. Now, we also want to add the scripts to that HTML, but there's a challenge because the place you put in the HTML is the actual HTML or you put a script or different places in the HTML page. Luckily, Visual Studio solved that for us with the .NET. I can say here section, scripts, and everything that I write in this section will be placed in the script section of the result HTML. So if I drag and drop demo controller over here, and I'll go and refresh our web page and request its source code, we can see that the hello demo string was placed in one place in our HTML, whereas the actual script that we've just added was placed in another place of our HTML, according to the correct place of scripts in our HTML. So this makes life a lot easier. Again, controlling the HTML and JavaScript becomes a lot, lot easier. Now we are using a framework called Angular, and to use Angular, you need a bit of a, a rep code around it. So let's go and get that. I'll add this to our JavaScript, I'll explain those in a second, and I'll add this to our HTML page. And let's explain what we've added here. We've defined an application, which we are using in our HTML. And we've defined a controller. A controller is a, the way you write your business logic in JavaScript, and the HTML is where you write the UI. And this code actually binds the two. So whenever I say DC dot, I will reflect this code that I have over here. Now, in the HTML, this means that everything within this div will be bound to this controller. Cool. Now, first thing we want to do, we want to sort the strings that the user wants to search. So we'll create a field for that, and we'll call it this search text. And in the HTML, we want to have the user input that string. So we say input, and we're going to bind it to the search text in our controller by saying ng model dc.search text. Okay, so by doing this, I bind this input to this search text field. Now, to show that they're actually bound, let's write some HTML here that will reflect the recompute, will reflect that whenever I change the UI, the controller changes as well. So I'll say here, we are searching for, and I'll place the search text over here using this curly brackets if part of the angular syntax and to put the value of the search text field in here. Great, let's see this in action. Let's go back to our browser. So now we have our input and when I will say norm, we can see that the right side recomputes immediately. When we say angular is cool, we can see that the recompute happens. Great, next thing you wanna do, we're gonna go show a list of customers based on the strings that we have. So we're going to go back to our HTML. We're going to delete this because we don't need it anymore. And we're going to place a table with a body and a row. And we want to have that row repeat for every customer that we have. So we're going to say ng repeat for every uh, cast in DC customers. And we need to define that DC customer. So let's make a list over here. DC customers equals an empty list. Great. Now for every customer, we want to have a table data sale, and in it, we're going to show the customer dot, and we want to show the company name. So we'll go to our service result from before, copy the company name, field name, just because typing is error prone, paste it here, and here we are. Next thing we need to do is whenever the input changes, we're going to go and get the data from the server. So we're going to add a new function from server.
and we're going to call that function whenever the input changes. So we're going to say here ng change equals tc dot our function. <clears throat> so whenever the input will change, it will call this function. Now in this function, we want to set the customers to the data that we receive back from our server. So we're going to say self dot customers equals server dot get data list of demo customers and we're going to send as a parameter the search text. Now this demo customers call over here with the get data list will actually call the same URL we've called over here. Demo customers and the strings that we want. And it will return the data as a JSON result, which will then be populated in the customers table and hopefully will display in the tables that we see over here. Let's go and see if it runs. We'll go back to our browser, refresh our browser. Cool. And we'll say here A, and we see the customers are starting with A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So we can see how easily I can create an HTML file that interacts between the view, the UI logic, the HTML, and the controller, the JavaScript that controls it. We could see how we could easily create a complex interaction here with a lot of the computes and server calls and everything with just a few lines of code. If you count the total, we are still under 30 lines of code, if you remove empty spaces, to be able to perform that complex interaction. In the next video, we're going to extend it to go and get the orders and print the report and maybe do some responsive UI to response to uh, mobile devices, etc. Thanks for watching and stay tuned.